The book of Genesis is the first book of the Bible and its storyline divides into two main parts. There is a chapters 1 to 11 which tell the story of God and the whole world and then there is a chapters 12 to 50 which zoom in and to tell the story of God and just one man, Abraham, and then his family. And these two parts are connected by a hinge story at the beginning of chapter 12. And this design, it gives us a clue as to how to understand the message of the book as a whole and how it introduces the story of the whole Bible. So the book begins with God taking the disorder and the darkness described in the second sentence of the Bible and God brings out of it order and beauty and goodness and he makes out of it a world where life can flourish and God makes these creatures called humans or Adam in Hebrew he makes them in his image which has to do with their role and purpose in God's world so Humans are made to be reflections of God's character out into the world. And they are appointed as God's representatives to rule his world on his behalf, which in context means to harness all its potential, to care for it and to make it where even more life can flourish. God blesses the humans. It's a key word in this book. And he gives them a garden, a place from which they begin starting to build this new world. Now the key is that the humans have a choice about how they are going to go about building this world and that is represented by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Up till now, God has provided and defined what is good and what is not good. But now God is giving humans the dignity and the freedom of a choice. Are they going to trust God's definition of good and evil? Or are they going to seize autonomy and define good and evil for themselves? And the states are really high. To rebel against God is to embrace death because you are turning away from the giver of life himself. This is represented by the tree of life. And so in chapter 3, a mysterious figure, a snake, enters into the history. The snake's given no introduction other than it's a creature that God made. And it becomes clear that it's a creature in rebellion against God and it wants to lead the humans into rebellion and their death. The snake tells a different story about the tree and the choice. It says that seizing the knowledge of good and evil are not going to bring death and it's actually the way to life and becoming like God themselves. 
now the irony of this is tragic because we know the humans are already like gods they were made to reflect god's image but instead of trusting god the humans seize autonomy they take the knowledge of good and evil for themselves and in an instant the whole story spirals out of control the first casualty is to human relationships the man and the woman they suddenly realize how vulnerable they are now they cannot even trust each other and so they make clothes and they hide their bodies from one another second casualty is that intimacy between god and humans is lost so they go run and hide from god and then when god finds them they start this game of blame shifting about who rebelled first now right here this story stops and there is a series of short poems where god declares to the snake and then to the humans the tragic consequences of their actions god tells the snake that despite its apparent victory it is destined for defeat to eat dust god promises that one day a seed or a descendant will come from the woman who is going to deliver a lethal strike to the snake's head which sounds like great news but this victory is going to come with a cost because the snake too will deliver a lethal strike to the descendant's heel as it's being crushed it is a very mysterious promise of this wounded victor but in the flow of the story so far you see that this is an act of god's grace the humans have just rebelled and what does god do god promises to rescue them but this does not arise the consequences of the humans decision so god informs them that now every aspect of their life together at home in the field it's going to be fraught with grief and pain because of the rebellion or leading to their death from here the story then spirals downward chapters 3 to 11 that trace the widening ripple effects of the rebellion and of human relationships fracturing at every level so there is a story of two brothers Cain and Abel Cain is to so jealous of his brother and he wants to murder him and God warns him not to give into the temptation but he does anyway he murders him in the field so Cain then goes on to build a city where violence and oppression reign and this is all epitomized in this story of Lamech he is the first man in the bible to have more than one wife he is accumulating them like property and then he goes on to singing a short song about how he is more violent and vengeful than Cain ever was after this 
we get an odd story about the sons of god which could refer to evil angelic beings or it could refer to ancient kings who claims that they descended from the gods and unlike lamik they acquired as many wives as they wanted and they produced the neftalim this great various of old whichever view is right the point is that humans are building kingdoms that fill god's world with violence and even more corruption in response we are told that god is broken with grief humanity is ruining his good world and they are ruining each other and so out of a passion to protect the goodness of his world he washes it clean of humanity's evil with a great flood but he protects one blameless human noah and his family and he commissions him as a new adam he repeats the divine blessing and commissions him to go out into the world and so our hopes are really high but then noah fails too and also in a garden he goes and he plants a vineyard and he gets drunk out of his might and then one of his sons ham does something shameful to his father in the tent and so here we have our new adam naked and ashamed just like the first and the downward spiral begins again it all leads to the foundation of the city of babylon the people of ancient mesopotamia they come together around this new technology they have the brick and they can make cities and towers bigger and faster than anybody's ever done before and so they wanted to build a new kind of tower that will reach up to the gods and they will make a great name for themselves it is an image of human rebellion and arrogance it is a garden of rebellion now with large and so god humbles their pride and scatters them now this is a diverse group of stories but you can see they are all exploring the same basic point god keeps giving humans the chance to do the right thing with his word and humans keep ruining it the stories are making a claim that we live in a good world that we have turned bad that we have all chosen to define good and evil for ourselves and so we all contribute to this world of broken relationships leading to conflict and violence and ultimately death but there is a hope god promised that one day a descendant would come the wounded victor who will defeat evil at its source and so despite humanity's evil god is determined to bless and rescue his world and so the big question is of course what is god going to do and the next story offers the answer 
but for now that's what genesis 1 to 11 is all about my good god bless you we'll see you next time with another part of genesis if this video has been helpful to you please like subscribe and continue to watch Kriba Global The Lights. Please click the bell icon below. Don't miss any of the powerful content we have in store. If you have a favorite Bible words, please write it in the comments below. Bye.